Hey lovelies. How is everybody today? Here we are again. It is live with Carla Nicole. Hope everybody's ready to have some fun today. We're going to talk about transformation. Let's talk about it, right? Transforming, changing, being willing to make sacrifices, but yet not getting too caught up and consumed with what we think we know. Just allowing for some things to be different, right? In order to transform, we must, we must be willing to learn to unlearn, right? So in order to do that, we have to do some things a little different, right? Um, beautiful, gorgeous day. Hey, Darlene, Debbie, Phyllis, welcome. So if you guys have never been to my show, this is Carla Nicole live. Well, live with Carla Nicole's show. Um, this show is every Sunday and um, at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. And um, so anyway, uh, right now I am doing the transformation series. Um, transforming in our lives is not always the easiest thing to do. Oftentimes we have thinking that we are set on. So I want to kind of challenge us a little bit about concrete thinking and how we can kind of change that and be willing to be open to something new. I love you too, Darlene. And be willing to be open to something new, open to something that's more gratifying um, for our lives. So first off, I want to let you know who I am if you don't know me personally. I'm Carla Nicole. I'm a single mother of two children. I have a son that is 10 and a daughter that is 19. My spiritual mission that I always share with everyone is to um, encourage everybody to be the best them. You know, uh, it's very important that we um, become who we are, but at the end of the day, we not only become who we are, but we become the best version of who we are and who we were born to be. Um, you know, a lot of times we forget that we were born to be be here <clears throat> and we were born with a purpose. A lot of times we chase many things that has nothing to do with our purpose, but everything to do with what we want rather than chasing what we are here to do. But that's a whole nother series, right? <laughs> so anyway, this is the transformation series today. I'm going to talk about um, your mindset because your because of your mindset so I want to kind of challenge us a little bit about concrete thinking okay concrete thinking when we get so set in our thinking we don't want to um, bend the rules we don't want to bend we don't want to even we don't even want to change we don't want to we don't want to even accept change we don't want to get ready for anything that is different than we, we think is the norm or what we're so used to something being. So a lot of times we don't want to um, be willing to allow change. But what we don't realize is change is going to happen regardless. Change happens when we're asleep. We change when we're walking, when we're breathing. As long as our heart is beating, we are changing. So it's vitally important that we welcome change, but a lot of times we don't want to do that, right? So I want to talk today because I think a lot of times when we are going through some transitions, I got a lot of people that I coach that are going through some transitions. People are, you know, empty nesters. So what that means is you got children that are now moving on into their next uh, cycle of life and your home is really quiet. Hey, Nina, your home is really quiet. You know, you're so used to the giggling and the laughing and the mom, I need to do this and dad, I need to do that. And then all of a sudden, your children are now grown. It's like, what the hey happened? My house is so quiet. I don't know what to do with this. I have people that I coach that, man, they are, they were a wife one minute. They went to sleep, woke up, it seems like. And the next day, they're in the middle of a divorce. They're in the middle of ending things. They're fighting. They're cussing each other out. They're no longer a harmonious relationship. So now 
you know, there's people in your life that you thought were here permanently are now either on to the next stage of their own life or they are now, you know, uh, no longer in your life. So what do we do, man? It's like, oh my God, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for this, you know. Um, when I have my bundle of joy, I bring my child home, I raise my child, I teach my child, I invest in my child, and then all of a sudden, they become adults and my house is now empty. And I'm an empty nester. What do I do with this? Um, or I thought he was, or she was the love of my life, and now all of a sudden, they're not. They have since changed their mind. Or... The relationship is no longer going in the right direction. We're now more um, fussing and fighting and no longer caring about each other's well-being. It's now getting to be ugly, so the best thing for me to do is walk away. What do I do, man? I'm not ready for this. I wasn't ready to get up in the morning and no longer be his wife. Or I wasn't ready to get up and no longer be responsible, financially, psychologically responsible for the child I brought into this world. It's a lot of transforming, right? And a lot of times we don't really realize that in transforming and transformation comes something that a lot of people don't wanna do, which is bending of thinking, changing the way we see things, being okay with the new improved version of our life. Um, I guess I'll start with being a parent and your home is quiet. Um, I often tell parents that, you know, it's not easy to um, transform to now being more of a mentor than a mommy per se or daddy per se where we're basically telling the child what to do, how to do it, and they must comply. So now we are now more of a mentor, a, a spiritual leader, a, 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 a life guide in our kid's life. And now it has changed tremendously. What do I do? I want you guys to think about something. See, when we go to college, we go to high school, we get a diploma, right? We get some kind of certificate saying that we've completed something. We, you know, people, people celebrate that we are now completed something. Um, but we don't really celebrate in completion of our stages of life. A lot of times we really don't prepare for when our children grow up and become adults. We just don't even see it coming. It like comes like a freight train. And you know, a lot of mothers, I know for a fact, have been in distress after their child is gone or moved on out of the home or you know they're just a basket case because they're like oh my god my babies oh my god what am I gonna do but I want to give you guys something that I think that you if you are a parent and you really haven't even projected in your mind what it's gonna look like when your child leaves your home I want you guys to really begin to plan and, and prepare for that now no matter the age of your child, you want to start to set in your mind that your child is on borrowed time. Your kids don't stay in the house forever. They eventually grow up, they become an adult, and they move out. So um, you want to prepare for that. And in order to do that, you have to find you. What does that mean? Well, we have an identity that we identify with inside. Who are we? You know, for the longest time, and I'll just put myself on front street, for the longest time, before I had my son, I was Morgan's mom. You know what I'm saying? I was Morgan's mom. Hi, oh yes, hi, I'm Morgan's mom. And, you know, uh, she was the main priority of what I had going on. I had to make sure that I was focused on being her mother and what that takes to be that and, and making sure she had everything and anything she needed. And that's great, fine, and wonderful. But um, when I started to find my own passion and, and I had my son and other things came into play, uh, you know, I went through a divorce and, and things of that nature, I had to get back to thinking, okay, oh my God, you know, what's next for me? Where do I go from here? Now that my daughter is no longer the front of my life and I'm no longer the role of Morgan's mom only per se, 
I now have to wonder how do I reconfigure in my mind who I am. Who am I as a woman? Number one. So I had to, what I call, this is what I always call laying low and reinvention. So I had a laying low and reinvention of time where I just laid low. I didn't say much to people. I just kind of decided, who am I? Yes, I'm Morgan's mom. Love being that. But who am I? Who is Carla Nicole, per se? And then when I, when I had to reintroduce myself to me and remove that thinking of, you know, you are only conformed to being Morgan's mom or my ex-husband's wife or my role as an employee for my job, you know, I had to now find out, well, who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? Transformation is the most beautiful thing to do, but it could be quite scary because you get so caught up in your role of being what your primary uh, life role is as far as caretaking and providing care for, for someone that it actually supersedes or becomes more to the forefront of who you are. So you lose sight of who you are as an individual, just you. Not not you as a mom or you as a or you as a wife or you as a girlfriend or you as as an employee, but just you. So I often tell people, especially my clients, I tell them to reintroduce themselves to who they are. Best way to do this is start writing down what is it on your bucket list that you want to do. Bucket list. If you don't know what that is, let me let me put you up on game. A bucket list is a list of things that you desire to do before you kick the bucket, before you leave the planet. What is it that you always wanted to do? Or what is it that you always wanted to pursue? Or what is it something that you always kind of had, you know, a liking for, but you kind of put it on the back burner, not because of the fact that just not to say that you're taking away from the fact that you had obligations in life, but sometimes when we are obligatory to other people, including our children, we oftentimes find ourselves putting what we want and what we desire and what we need on the back burner to make sure that our children have what they need or our spouse or our family needs or whatever. So like I said, I had to sit back and think, well, what is it that I really kind of like doing? Before I became Morgan's mom, you know what I'm saying? Before I became a United Healthcare employee, before I became my ex-husband's wife, what was it, who was it that I was? What did I want? What did I need? What did I desire to do? So I had to see and kind of go back into my history and look back on what is it that I really used to kind of have a taste for. And, and I found out by going back into my old history and talking to some elementary friends that I had that I, I loved poetry. I was like, really? And a friend of mine told me that I was her inspiration to write poetry when we were in school. I'm talking about when we were in like junior high school. I was like, really? She's like, yeah, you inspired me to write poetry. I was like, wow. Well, let me, let me reintroduce myself to that. And so I decided to go back and and kind of uh, begin writing again. And then, and then, um, and then after I did that, I'm like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize how much I do love to not only do poetry, but I also love writing. And so I began to go back into my desire of poetry. And I was writing poetry like you wouldn't believe, you know, I just began to say, you know, this is something I like, really like. And this has nothing to do with my role of, of any of my positions in life, but just this is who I am. This is a part of me. And I had to reconnect with that. And I'm like, hey, as long as I can reconnect to my desire, my own personal desire, perhaps maybe I can make sure that I can be an inspiration to other people. So then I was like, well, I'm terrified to speak to people in, in 
in front of people. I'm, I, you know, I had a fear to talk to people like this. I was terrified to, to be in front of people. I was like, I can't do that, you know, and, and, and I had to face fears with that. So then the reason why I'm giving you how I did the step-by-step -step transformation is because as my example, I want you to know that you can still be even in your hurts and pains, even in your divorce. And your divorce could be a divorce from the old you, a divorce of the old, you know, your, your, your mothering, a divorce from the old um, role as a wife or whatever, or even gentlemen, the divorce from your, your job and your position that you had for all those years, you're divorced from that, or you're divorced from the military so you're no longer obligated because you're retired. All of those things change you. And so now that you're not obligatory to that role or to that position, who are you now? And so in order to become who you are and who you want to be, it's very, very important that you sit back and say, okay, I'm going to make sure that with this life and who I am today, I'm going to focus on finding out what it is I love to do. It's not that hard to do. Watch out, there's a bee. <laughs> it's not hard as to what I want to do, okay? So, with that said, when you go through a heartbreak, and I know a lot of my people that I'm coaching are going through a heartbreak right now, going through some hurts and pains and, and a loss of a, of a relationship, and I wanted to kind of touch base with you about um, how to heal from that. First of all, it's not easy. Um, you know, um, as we grow and we transition in life, sometimes the person that we thought we married, quote unquote, or the person that we had an intentional relationship with, or the person we have a love built a love life with we tend to believe that that person is for us right we say oh yeah the, I it is for us so with that said we want to make sure that sometimes that changes sometimes that person it was for us at the time and during a season of time but changed so what do we do I mean how do we get out of feeling like um, a huge amount of depression or loss it's not always the hardest part is it's not always about the fact that our relationship has you know uh, died or, or, or um, is no longer in the facet of what it was but sometimes our relationships transform and what I always say is when you when you are in a relationship and you're in that relationship for a long period of time, your relationship can go through its turbulence or through its changes or through its, I don't know, differences um, because we change so much during the courses of the of the years, months, days. I mean, we change all the time. So when you're going through that turbulence or through that hurt and pain, it's really key that we sit back and realize that while we're in a relationship with someone, we actually become conformed to being in that role, okay? So it's not necessarily that the loss of the relationship is hard to get over, but the loss of being the role that you played in the relationship is harder to get over than actually walking away from a, from a relationship that really isn't to your benefit anymore. So that's where we have to look at, okay, hold on. You know what, now that I think about it, this relationship really isn't to my benefit anymore. It's not working for me, but it's hard to let it go, right? But it shouldn't be because remember, when we are in relationships, we really need to be mindful that relationships may be forever, they may not be. So you always must always sit in the mindset, since we're gonna talk about mindsets, you really wanna sit in the mindset that sometimes relationships can change. 
they can end or they can be long lasting. It just depends on how you and that relationship replenish. And if you guys continue to pour into a grave amount of understanding, patience, and really being um, open and honest. A lot of times we don't want to tell the truth. And so when we're not telling the truth, a lot of times it's like, oh my God, I just want to tell people what they want to hear rather than telling them of the truth. And again, this is part of transformation. When you are okay and understanding who you are, you have no reason to water yourself down. You don't have to do that. You don't have to change who you are. But just remember that when you change or when you transform or when you are in a different type of setting in a relationship and it, and it changes or it ends, it doesn't mean you have to be depressed. Understand, sometimes relationships may end, sadly. But how we perceive the end can be a big, 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 huge difference, make a huge difference when it comes to recovery from the loss. So I'm going to talk about that real fast. What are you saying to yourself in the loss of your relationship? And I'm talking about while it's in the heartbeat of the pain of the loss. What are you saying to yourself? Are you saying to yourself that no one else is going to want to date you now? You're not going to find anybody else? This person might move on with someone else. I mean, what are you really saying to yourself? Once you figure out what your inner dialogue is to you, you can change it. In your private thoughts, you can change it very easily. Start by changing how you see it. When you change how you see it, it changes the game. Because now it's like, oh, you know what? I didn't lose this relationship. Because look, when we say we lost something, it, it's like it's a hurt there. It's like a sadness that's attached to saying I lost. But actually, you gained something. You gained experience. And in that relationship, you had moments of happiness. You had moments of joy. You had mo moments of energy that you may not have ever experienced before. Which is a beautiful thing. So if you change your perception, like I said earlier, when you change your mindset, it changes the game. Because now your loss is no longer a loss. It's now a transformity of how you see it. So when you're hurt or you're sad or you're upset, listen, change how you look at it. You didn't lose here if your relationship is over. You had something beautiful that you, you know, it, you can actually value and you can actually sit back and say, well, I actually had a relationship that was fulfilling in the time frame that it was. So don't only look at it from the end, but look at it from the beginning. Because a lot of times when we see relationships in the end, we always want to collapse. But we need to look at what happened to bring you two together that helped you to become better people. You two became better people because of your acquaintance. And in that, and that's why you guys got together to begin with. So don't always perceive the end as the only way to focus on what, what was really the value of that relationship in your life. Here's the thing, if you had a relationship, I can tell you right now, there's many people that have not. <laughs> so first of all, you have something that a lot of people didn't have. So that's a beautiful thing. Number two, you've had a relationship. So now you know what it is that you need for your future relationship. It doesn't mean that you won't ever have another beautiful relationship, baby girl or baby boy. You know what? You are still fabulous, whether you are in a relationship or not beautiful thing is now that your relationship is over you can now reintroduce yourself to you get to know you again right you can now spend some time on what you want to do and you want to inspire to be and then when you do that check this out most likely you'll find somebody else that's a better fit for you now because you're a different person you're not the same person you were with this person that you just left or that you're in a, a, a divorce with, or who's the ex that you were with. It's just not the same. You're just not the same. We, we change. We transform. And it's okay. We need to stop making grief the only way to handle a change of a loss or a change of a relationship. We need to start looking at it like, you know what? 
I am no longer confined or no longer um, chained to a role I was in. I'm now back to who I am. And so because of that, I'm now able to reconnect with my own self, reconnect back to who I was. And so when we do that, it just changes the game. See, a lot of times we really don't want to sit back and look at what is it that we get or gain when our life changes dramatically. First of all, when I talked about, you know, changing parenting, remember I said, hey, when your children leave, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and go and you are now an empty nester, you get to be single again. If, if not, you get to you and your spouse or mate, y'all get to have fun again and be about you, you two. We collapse <laughs> as soon as we drop our kids off to college. We can't even see. We're crying so hard. When my daughter transitioned from from you know being in high school and transition to college I shed a few tears but I didn't collapse man I'm like listen I am so proud of you be you baby girl get that degree I'm proud of you you do you and you know she's going to anyway I'm not even the first priority her man is and her college is and her job is and I don't take it personal that's what that's the stage she's in if I didn't understand that before it happened I'd still be at 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 this college crying and trying to get my life together so I wanted to give you guys a think a, a change of thought transform your your mindset because when we change how we look at stuff do you know how much better we are just by saying you know what yes the relationship the way it was is over it is it's over but we can still be friends we can still be confidants we can still enjoy each other's time but that phase of you and I is over doesn't mean I have to hate you doesn't mean I have to cuss you every time I see you don't doesn't mean I have to wish harm to you I can be like look I'm thankful you were here when you were I appreciate the time we had together it's trained changed and transformed to something different now and that's okay I'm, I'm okay see and a lot of times we don't really sit down and say am I okay you're okay you're okay even when the relationship isn't what it used to be. You're okay because you have what it takes to be who you are. And we can't just think that, oh my God, my life is over because someone walked out of our life. We can't do that. And we have to understand that when you begin to look at it that way, guess what happens? Depression sets in. Sadness sets in. Anxiety can set in. Because we're, we get a nervousness like, I don't know how to handle my life changes. But your life's going to change always. Nothing's concrete in this planet. On the, I mean, we're all free to change. So we have to learn to embrace it. When we learn to embrace change, and we learn to um, really truly enjoy it, laugh at it um, and really understand that our life is what it is because of it the lessons we learn from the different relationships we're in are, are the ones that we need for the next phase of life our next season we learn some stuff in our exes with our exes right I know I did I learned a lot from ex-boyfriends ex-husbands I learned a lot I didn't look at them as a hindrance to my life growth I'm still gonna grow and even you know even though you know um, I always look at it like you know when you you're in a relationship I look at it like when you're in a train and you know you ding it ding, and you have to get off I look at it like that they're just not gonna go with you to the next destination if we look at it that way we'll see that the doors continue to open at the next destination and we don't know who's gonna get on on our next on our next at the next exit we don't know so if we just are more open and saying okay um even we may have to get off of the train but that's okay our life is still going to be fulfilled right this is the transformation series and i want y'all to understand that by transforming we become better us better versions of who we are and 
It's 110% the greatest thing we can do. Definitely. So listen, my time is up already. I don't know how it happens, but it happens so quickly. I wanted to let you guys know that I have a course coming very soon called Learn to Unlearn. It is in the comments. If you want to be a part of that course, click the link. You can take a look at the landing page. The landing page will show you all about the course. I'm real excited about this course, but it is a course called Learning to Unlearn. This transformation series is to help us learn how to unlearn some old thinking and how to empower new thinking in our life. That's going to be more beneficial. So click the link, make sure you sign up, and then you'll be definitely um, alerted once the course is up and ready. So make sure you sign up for that. And also I have a um, video call, a VIP pass called Better Loving Call which is a loving call for people that are doesn't matter what kind of relationship status you're in how to attain better loving in your life it will be october the 14th 2018 at 10 o'clock p.m at night it'll be on video messenger so you'll be able we'll be able to vibe and talk about um, intimacy and how to get the best out of it while we're while we're in a relationship in a loving relationship and then if you're a Wisdom Focus Group member, you get a discount for that. If you're not, inbox me. I can tell you how to become a member because if you're not a Wisdom Focus member yet, you are missing out. So make sure you get a hold to me so I can give you that information as well. All right? So I'm out of here, everybody. So glad you hung out with me for the 30 minutes. Oh, it's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best cap. Best cap, everybody. Have a good day. Bye.